we can simply change the way people make decisions on what they do with physical activities and eating and other kinds of things, we can save more money in healthcare than all of the red tape cutting, all of the, the cutting of bureaucracies that we're now talking about. There are tremendous opportunities there. And I, we're delighted to see that there is now a, a general agreement. I think everybody has seen these maps. If you haven't, you know, look at the dramatic change in terms of, of what this nation looks like and feels like. This is a, a depiction of the percentage of the American public in every state that qualifies as being overweight and obese. Uh, from 1990 to 2009, 19 years, look at the change in the percentage of the public that is now uh, impeded in terms of, of their health and other kinds of things by, by consequences of their health. Uh, this is the Park Prescription document that I referenced before, uh, and it's about enlightened medical care people who want to make a difference and see the outdoors as the opportunity to do that. Our goal is pretty, pretty simple. If we can monetize the role parks play in health and gain the health community contributions to operations and even our capital needs, we can make some tremendous progress in the 21st century. And it doesn't have to be truly groundbreaking. Victoria, Australia is already there, with some 15% of their park budget being paid for by the healthcare industry. Okay, we, we see some good indications. This is Harvard Medical Schools, uh, regular, every two weeks they put out a publication, and this is, is one of theirs. Uh, they, uh, in typical Cambridge style, and Secretary Darcy will, will uh, admire this, uh, they have to call it uh, going out fresco as opposed to yeah, going outdoors, but that, that's a Cambridge kind of way to explain things. Uh, the First Lady's campaign to combat youth obesity is, is certainly an exciting opportunity and one that we need to, to fully support. Uh, and I think it's great, Will, that uh, you know, your, your department is moving to, to, to embrace that and, and supply them with, with some real uh, horsepower there. Opportunities and Challenges 2011. As we gather today, there are lots of potential forces uh, that are either challenges or opportunities, and we can define which it is. AGO, uh, terribly important, the health issue, jobs in the economy. Um, I'll come back to that in just a second, but I think we're, we're at a place where we can say, uh, without any fear of, of uh, uh, contradiction, that we can be a source of economic growth the FLORIA reauthorization, that's the, the Federal Lands Recreation Enhancement Act. It gives five agencies, though not the core, the ability to levy recreation fees and to retain those fees for operations and maintenance. The Park Service Centennial in 2016, and the opportunity to use all of that excitement. The President's Military Family Initiative, uh, an, an important observation uh, made recently was that the nation's military looks more like all of America than our visitors to our national parks and our national forests. It is much more of a diverse organization and if we can use the military as a way to, to introduce uh, young people to the outdoors, I think there's a tremendous opportunity there. Uh, the surface transportation legislation, I mentioned the, the $2 billion a year that now comes into recreation related programs. That's everything from the Aquatic Resources Trust Fund to Scenic Byways to the Recreational Trails Program to other programs. Uh, we uh, have to play a stake in, in the reauthorization of that. Uh, the let's move, let's move outside. And finally, uh, the reality of uh, efforts by both the administration and the Congress to control the deficit. All right, we're in a venue that will help us think big. This is an extraordinary property. It's a result of a complex remarkable and sustainable partnership between the Corps, the City of Grapevine, and Gaylord. Uh, it's a remarkable economic engine. Thousands of jobs were created in construction and in operation. And there are plans already underway to expand this, creating more jobs. And this involves a total commitment of 50 acres of core land, including both flowage and fee uh, I think it, when you start looking at a nation where one third of the nation is federally managed, it puts in perspective how much opportunity there is for partnerships out there. 
We have remarkable participants. In just a minute, we'll be hearing from John Crompton. We have Dr. Soup with us. We have Dr. Eduardo Sanchez. We have administration leaders. We have heroes from coast to coast. There are so many people in this audience who deserve a standing ovation. I mean, I look over at Susan Alden Weingard and what she's done in terms of National Get Outdoors Day. I have just, I, each one of you uh, brings such magic to the great outdoors. We have special new allies. I mentioned Stephen Waltz, the superintendent of Prince William County Schools, and his commitment to everything from healthy food for his kids and growing food on school campuses to the Ed Out program that he'll be talking to us about. And an off-site seminar that's going to challenge us as we try to think is the Great Wolf Lodge, friend or foe. What does that mean to us? How do we work in, in better partnership with the Bass Pro shops across this country? All those kinds of issues will be there. So we're deciding today uh, how to spend our time, our energy, uh, and it's really the future of recreation in this country uh, is going to be determined by people like us who care enough to be involved and to, to put our hearts and soul in operation to actually um, make a difference, to build on this vision of the great outdoors, and uh, I think we're going to have some fun doing that. So, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on being part of Partners Outdoors 2011. I think we're going to have some fun. Thank you again, and uh, congratulations to each of you for being here.